Imagine having something wrong with your car. Why do you own a car? Uh, you have a car to get you to places, uh, to take you from A to B. Uh, that's why cars are made. Uh, but imagine something has gone wrong so that your car is no longer able to perform that basic function. Perhaps it does uh, to some extent, uh, but it's lost performance. Uh, it's lacking acceleration or the brakes are making a, a terrible noise, uh, whatever the problem might be. Today, uh, keep that in your mind, but today here in Hebrews chapter 2, the writer of this epistle quotes from Psalm 8. Uh, in verse 6 he says, It has been testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honour, put in everything under his feet. Uh, in Psalm 8, David is in wonder uh, that God cares for man. What is man that you are mindful of him? You have crowned him with glory and honour, put in everything under his feet. Uh, just like my car has a function, at the very beginning, God gave man and woman a function. Uh, Genesis tells us, Genesis 1 verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So men and women, a man and woman, were made in the image of God after his likeness. And because of that, what God gave them to do reflected what God himself is like. Uh, so God is creator, God is sustainer. And so what did he give man to do? Genesis 1 verse 26 says this, Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Uh, God gave man dominion over the garden in which he was placed. And this is what Psalm 8 says, which the writer of Hebrews quotes here. You have crowned him with glory and honour, put in everything under his feet. And then the writer of Hebrews goes on. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside of his control. Uh, so God gave men and women rule over his creation. Everything was to be subject to them and under their control. But then the end of verse 8, here in Hebrews 2, says this. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. Uh, so that's how things were set up to be. Uh, but that's not what we see going on around us. Uh, men and women, it seems, certainly do not have everything subject to them and under their control. Uh, let me quote from one of the commentators, Richard Phillips. Uh, he writes this. If God placed everything under man's feet, then something has gone awry. If we begin making a list of those things in this world very evidently not under man's control, it quickly becomes quite large. Man is at the mercy of the weather. His food supply, even today, is greatly influenced by forces outside of his control. Mankind is starving, bleeding, crying and suffering all over the globe. Hurricanes, droughts, tornadoes and floods beat against man with unmastered fury. Man may enjoy a large degree of influence over nature and the animal creation, but he does not rule them. And so men and women, um, they're a bit like that car um, that's lost its performance, or, or a car that's still clearly a car, uh, but not fulfilling the purpose for which it was made. What's gone wrong? Uh, well, the Bible is very clear. Rebellion. Uh, the first man and woman disobeyed the command that God had given them. But verse 9 tells us here that Jesus is the answer. Uh, verse 9, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honour because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Uh, so Jesus was made 
lower than the angels. He took on human flesh. He became man. He did in that what that first man failed to do. Um, in the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ, he was perfectly obedient and he tasted death. He went to the cross. He took the curse of death upon himself. Uh, here is God's grace that God provided a substitute for his people in the giving of his son. And so because of Christ's obedience, because of what he did for his people in going to the cross, he was, verse 9 says, crowned with glory and honour. The Father raised the Son to the highest place of honour. That place of honour has not been given to angels. So remember, Jesus is better than angels. The place of honour has not been given to angels, but to him. Verse 5 says, For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come of which we are speaking. Uh, now, what's the big point uh, that the writer to the Hebrews is trying to make uh, to these wavering Christians? The big point is this. Uh, remember the second half of verse 8. We do not yet see everything in subjection to him. The answer to the problem of what sin has done to us and uh, what sin has done to this world is found in Jesus Christ. A man does not rule or control because he has disobeyed God and because ever since he has acted as if he is God and above God. And so the answer is Jesus Christ because he has gone to the cross for the sake of his people. Because of that, he has now been exalted to the highest place. And because of that, he now rules. And uh, because he rules, or in his rule, God has subjected everything to him. Uh, but this is the problem. It doesn't feel like it. Uh, that's perhaps the problem of these Hebrews. Uh, being a Christian is tough. It doesn't feel like Jesus rules, uh, because Christians have such a tough time. Uh, well, this is the now and not yet tension of the New Testament. Uh, think of that car again. Uh, that car is not working or functioning properly. Uh, what do you do? You take it to the garage uh, and the car spends the day with the mechanic. In the afternoon then you get a call from the garage and the mechanic says it's all fixed. Everything's ready. You can come and collect the car. Now you haven't seen the car yet because you're in your house and the car is in the garage. You haven't seen the fixed car. You haven't driven it yet. But even though you're not yet in possession of it, it is already fixed. Now, the fact that the car is fixed is a reality, even though you haven't yet experienced that reality yourself. And so it is with the Gospel. Verse 5, God has subjected the world to Christ. But it's also true that that is to come, and verse 8, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him. But his reign in heaven is real, and one day it will be unveiled for all to see. And one day there will be that second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and one day all his enemies will be destroyed along with the devil and all of his angels. And so the question is this, as we suffer in this world and as we suffer for Christ, are we going to live in the light of that reality? The reality that Christ reigns and therefore we have nothing to fear.